Alleluia, Christ is risen. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this, um, we're still in the Easter season, but today we've moved the festival day of the ascension of our Lord today. So today is uh, the, uh, the ascension of our Lord, a festival day. Is, it was really this past Thursday, but a lot of churches um, move it to, to uh, science. I believe it's the seventh Sunday of Easter, um, so you're allowed to, to move it. Uh, which is what we have done. So this is, as I'll say in my children's sermon, this is the, the last thing that Jesus did um, through his ministry on earth. And then he was taken up, and I'll talk more about that later today. But this is um, the last event in his, his time on, on earth through his, through his earthly ministry. Um, which means next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church. So I want to encourage everyone, if you can, to wear red. Now, I will not be here next Sunday. Uh, I feel a little bad. Next, it's a big weekend next weekend. So this coming Saturday, we have the yard sale and bake sale. So if you have anything you could donate, we'd appreciate that. And um, those items can be brought uh, down. The, the yard sale items can be brought on the first floor. And then I think the baked goods are, uh, if you could wait until Friday, that would be great. Um, but um, we have that this Saturday, and then Sunday, of course, is the day of Pentecost. Since I will be away, my, my friend, Pastor Dave Kaplan, will be filling in. Uh, he's been here before. Uh, he's the uh, retired pastor from uh, St. Mark's Lutheran Church, but in Hagerstown. So he'll be here. I'm going away. My best friend's getting married uh, this Saturday, and I've been asked to, to officiate the wedding. So it's kind of a working vacation, but um, I'm excited, but I'm still preaching um, on the weekend anyway, at least for his wedding. Um, and this will be probably the first Sunday since I became a pastor that I'll have to remember to pack something red. Usually I just wear the red stole and I'm good, but um, this time I'll have to remember. So, um, but yeah, it's just a, you don't have to wear red. It's just a way to kind of make the day more special. It's, of course, the day we remember when the Holy Spirit uh, came to the 12 disciples. And that was when the 12 disciples finally started to, to preach and spread the gospel. And we, again, we often call that the birthday of the church. So a few things going on this week. Um, on Thursday, in the morning, 10 to 11.30, is Bible study. Then in the evening at 6.30, we'll be placing uh, flags out in the cemetery for our veterans. Um, and then again on Saturday is the yard sale and bake sale from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So that's all going on this, just this week. Um, I want to keep reminding people of the bus trip. If you're able to go, please let me know or let Mary right now or know uh, right away. We're trying to fill the bus. We have to have 35 seats in order for the bus to take us, and we're not quite there. So I've reached out to several churches. And I've already got a few people from other churches said they'd like to go, but we're not quite at 35. So if you know anybody who might like to go, anybody can go as long as they can pay. Uh, we, we do need that. Um, but anybody can go on the trip, and um, so we, we, we hope we have enough people. If we don't, we'll talk about other options. I know a lot of us still would like to go see the Museum of the Bible, so we'll figure out something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I say, if for some reason it, if we can't do it this time, we don't get 35. We'll, we'll look at other options. Um, 
But if, like I said, if you know any, if, if you can go or you know someone who wants to, please let us know. And, um, and like I said, we're hoping to do that there in uh, June 17th. So, okay, thank you. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Anything I may have forgotten or? Okay, well then we prepare, prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. I would like to invite the congregation. <coughs> excuse me. I'd like to invite the congregation to please rise in body or spirit. <coughs> and we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son John was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us in our prayers for all the world, and in the end bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The first reading for this Ascension Sunday is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 11, 1 through 11. Luke writes, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upward toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The first reading ends here, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, the great King over all the earth. Who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. Who chooses our inheritance for us, I that Jacob and God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations, God is enthroned on high. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. Our second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. 
and he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I did think of something I forgot. After service is our potluck lunch today. So if you can uh, stay, please join us um, and we'll, uh, in the social room and, and we'll have lunch together. So I, I, I knew I was for, forgetting something. So anyway, after service is our, our monthly potluck lunch. So I say monthly, this is our last one until September. So we'll take a, take a, won't have any in the summertime. Now, at this time, I would like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Well, good morning. So today is an important day in the church year. Today is one of these special days we call a festival day. And today is called the Ascension of our Lord. Who's our Lord? The Ascension of our Lord? Jesus, exactly. Jesus is our Lord. So today is called the Ascension of our Lord. So throughout the... We're often remembering things... When, in with the time that Jesus was on Earth, uh, teaching his the twelve disciples and others, so we, we remember that time he spent on Earth. And what's the first event in his life that we celebrate? It's kind of the first event in everyone's life. Someone's life to begin. What has to happen, Alex? When they're born. That's right. So the first thing we remember is when Jesus was born. And, what do we call his birthday? His birthday is a special name. Sammy? Christmas. Christmas, exactly. And then we remember, a little bit of time passes, and then we remember another big event in Jesus' life. And this begins his time of teaching and performing miracles. You know that already? Baptism. Exactly, his baptism. So then we remember his baptism. So... Now, this gets a little confusing. We, we, almost every Sunday, we remember something from the time Jesus was on earth with everyone. Um, but this Sunday, we actually, I know the year's not over yet, but this Sunday, we remember the last thing he did while he was on earth with everyone and everyone could see him. And that's was he ascended. Now, what's that mean, to ascend? What do you think that, that means to go what? Go up, right? So that's when Jesus ascended into heaven and to be with God the Father, okay? 
that Jesus went up to be with God the Father. Now, you can look at, there's the disciples. Now, you think they might have been sad that Jesus was leaving them because they love him, <clears throat> they love him, and he's been their teacher all this time. But we're told that they weren't sad. The Bible says um, that they worshipped him and they returned home with great joy. So they're actually happy. And they were happy for a couple reasons. We're told that when right before Jesus went into heaven, he opened up the scriptures to them. So he helped them understand what book. What book? Well, I think even more than Genesis. Genesis is part of what? What what, what? The whole book. Genesis is in it. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. He helped them. So we call that sometimes the scriptures. But, but he basically helped them understand the Bible. He also promised them that God would always be with them and that he'd be sending them God, the Holy Spirit, to live inside of them. So he, he wanted them to know that God would always, always be with them, okay? So that's why they're not sad. And the same is true for us. God is always with us. And one way we know is that what we, this, this morning we remembered our baptism. And when we're baptized, although you guys can't remember your baptism, and I can't remember mine, but when you're baptized, we're promised that God the Holy Spirit is in you. So each one of you, what, who's inside each one of you? God, yep, God. And, in, and through our baptism, more specifically, God the Holy Spirit. Now, the disciples, Jesus helped them understand what book? What book? The Bible. The Bible, good job. The disciples went out and helped other people understand the Bible. And they went out and helped other people understand the Bible. And the group that we call that helps people understand the Bible is the church. And one of the reasons we come to church is to help each other understand what book? The Bible. So that's, that's one of the missions of the church. That's one of the big things the church is supposed to do is help people understand the Bible Help them know that God loves them and that God is with them, okay? So, and that's why as Christians, as people who believe and follow Jesus, most of the time we should be happy people because we know who's inside of us. God. God loves us. He lives inside of us. So as Christians, like we should be like those disciples when they saw Jesus go into heaven, and we should be happy. Okay, um, will you please pray with me? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, today we remember when you ascended into heaven and were seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank you for being faithful to the mission that you were given by the Father to save humanity and help us to remember that although we cannot see you, that you are always with us. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I could be wrong, but I believe, I believe that a joke about the Christian festival day, the ascension of our Lord, was written during the pandemic. Every year since 2021, I've seen a joke online that says that the ascension of our Lord is the day, is the day when Jesus decided to work from home. I've, I've, I saw it again this week all over the place. Ascension is the, the day Jesus decided to work from home. If that joke existed before the pandemic, then I never heard it before. But once... But uh, since the pandemic, like I said, I see it all the time, I, and especially on social media. 
And I think it's a great joke. It connects with our mo modern time. We hear a lot about people for, who say they work from home. And, and it's truthful. It's true. They often say uh, all good comedy has some truth to it. So it's, it's, it fits with our modern times and it's truthful. Although Jesus is in heaven, he's still, he is still working to help humanity. Now, one of the confusing aspects about, of Christianity is that part of Jesus remains on earth. Jesus is truly present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. And although we cannot see him, Jesus is present every time two or more Christians gather in his name. So he is with us right now. So Jesus is present on earth and at the same time in heaven, where he continues to work on our behalf. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4 says, We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. So Jesus continues to hear our prayers and intercedes on our behalf in heaven. He is our great high priest in heaven. So although Jesus is not walking the earth, he is still very much at work. And on top of that, as our psalm and our first lesson teach us, Jesus is the ruler of the universe. So he's not only at work helping us, but he's truly the ruler of the universe. Our psalm for today says that the Lord most high is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. And then in verse 8, we are told God reigns over the nations. God is enthroned on high. Now, Martin Luther once wrote that the 47th Psalm is a prophecy of Christ, that he shall rise up, that he shall rise up and become king over all the world without a battle, simply through shouts, songs, and trumpet calls. That is, through the joyful preaching of the gospel. Just as the walls of Jericho fell by trumpet blasts and shouts without weapons at all. Martin Luther's words about this psalm is a reminder that Jesus of Nazareth is truly the Prince of Peace. And that Jesus is not like the rest of humanity. He's not filled with anger or seeking revenge. He's not out looking for conquest or to amass riches. Instead, his time on earth teaches us that he truly is our God. And that unlike human beings, he is quick to love others. That he is a message of mercy and reconciliation. And that he wants nothing more than for us to admit our sin, believe in him, and show the same kind of love that he has for us to others. Now, as Ephesians chapter 1 says, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. So Jesus has earned this place of authority. And he has earned his followers. Again, not through battles, but instead he has earned his followers through love, mercy, suffering, and perfect faithfulness to God the Father. So today we not only remember that Jesus is working from home, but we also celebrate the fact that Jesus is the great king over all the earth. And again, that's what our psalm and our second lesson uh, especially focuses on. A well, part of our attention on this festival day should be on Jesus. Again, that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and that Jesus is the great king over all the earth, and that Jesus is still at work. 
But in addition to Jesus, we should also be focused on the disciples of Jesus Christ, both past and present. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he had words for the 12 disciples. In our gospel lesson, Jesus said, And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then in our first lesson, we see that the 12 disciples still do not fully understand Jesus' plan for them. We are told that the disciples ask, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of heaven? Or, I'm sorry, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? That's what they said. Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria until the ends of the earth. Jesus had a mission for the 12 disciples. And it's the same mission that he has for you and me. And that mission is to spread his good news and to follow in his example until it is our time to be called up to heaven. Well, this past Friday, St. Mark's Book Club had their latest meeting. And the book we discussed was Faith, A Journey for All by former President Jimmy Carter. Now, what was interesting for me about this book was that many of the theologians that President Carter quoted were theologians whose works I read during seminary, you know, at least part of their works. Well, in one section of the book, President Carter brought up a criticism about Christianity that I've heard at least since I was in seminary, maybe, maybe even longer, but I've heard this quite often. President Carter wrote that he has a copy of the 1989 edition of the book called The 100, which ranks the most influential people in history. And the author, Michael Hart, places Muhammad at the top ahead of Jesus. Hart explains there are two principal reasons for that decision. First, Muhammad played a far more important role in the development of Islam than Jesus did in the development of Christianity. Although Jesus was responsible for the main ethical and moral precepts of Christianity, St. Paul was the main developer of Christian theology, its principal proselytizer, and the author of a large portion of the New Testament. Now, I've heard this argument several times. A lot of, I've had a lot of people tell me that St. Paul is really the founder of the Christian church and of most Christian beliefs, and not Jesus. Now, it is true that St. Paul is the greatest evangelist who ever lived. But Jesus had already established the church before Paul ever became a believer. The church was relatively small when Jesus ascended into heaven. But it was Jesus who instructed the disciples and who told them that they would be sent out to, wit to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Now, no one should be surprised that the church grew so significantly after Jesus ascended into heaven. In John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus tells the, 12, Jesus tells the disciples, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. He tells them, we'll do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. As we see in our first lesson, Jesus instructed the disciples, and again, this really does include St. Paul and other future disciples, that they, would, that they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It was Jesus' plan all along that his followers, sinners, imperfect people, would be able to spread his good news 
throughout the world. Now, the followers of Jesus may be sinners, but we are forgiven sinners, and we may not be perfect like Jesus, but we are given help. In our first lesson, Jesus tells the disciples, For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Baptism is so important because through our baptism we are promised that we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us and who helps us in our faith and in our mission to live out and spread the gospel message. Now many people who did not grow up in the church will say that they felt the Holy Spirit leading them to Jesus before they were baptized. And that can definitely happen. That can definitely happen. However, one of the reasons baptism is given to us is so we can be assured that we have received the Holy Spirit, that our sins have been forgiven, and that we are members of the family of God, commissioned, commissioned with the mission to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus. And as we see in the book of Acts, the disciples did not go out to do greater works until they received help from the Holy Spirit. They did not go out to do greater works until they received help from the Holy Spirit. So as influential as St. Paul was, he is not the main developer of Christian theology. He is not the founder of the Christian church. Jesus established the church, and he instructed the original disciples. It was then, as he predicted with the coming of the Holy Spirit, that the disciples, including St. Paul, were able to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. And this is a mission that has been passed down to every new generation of disciples. And it is our mission until we are called to rest with God in heaven. You and I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and called to share the gospel through word and deed with all those around us. Most of us are not called to be traveling, the, to be traveling missionaries like St. Paul, but we are all called to share the gospel and word and deed with those around us. So this is our last Sunday in the Easter season. No matter what, no matter the exact date that the ascension of our Lord is celebrated, it is a time to remember that Jesus is still very much alive, that he is truly the king over all the earth who reigns over the nations, and that he is often working from home on our behalf. Again, Jesus continues to be with us here on earth in a few different ways. But he is also our high priest in heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father. The ascension of our Lord also prepares us for Pentecost. We are reminded that Jesus has work for us to do. That we too are called to do great things in the name of our Lord. Again, we have help from both Jesus and from the Spirit and from each other. But we do have work to do. And our work is to grow the kingdom of God. Not with weapons and with battles, but through acts of love and kind words that teach people that God truly loves them. Amen.
I invite the church, I invite the congregation to please rise, either in body or spirit. And with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <clears throat> o oh God, beyond all praising, we worship you and adore you. You have revealed your glory through your Son, who has risen and ascended and who reigns at your right hand forever. Hear us, O oh God. Make your church abide in Jesus as he abides in you. Cause it to preach the gospel of salvation and celebrate the sacraments in accordance with that gospel. Let it proclaim to the whole world your blessing without number and your mercy without end. Hear us, O God. Unite our hearts with, our, with fellow disciples of your Son and with, and with missionaries of your gospel. Let us all be so united to your beloved Son and with one another, that in everything we glorify your name and spread the bounties of your mercy throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Let the radiance of our beautiful Savior fill the hearts and sanctify the ministries of this congregation. Make our worship into a joyful duty and our service into a sacrifice of praise. Use us to lead others to Jesus, that with us they may worship, honor, bless, and adore him. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have appointed your Son as King of creation and Lord of the nations. Teach our leaders to praise your name, to love justice and righteousness, and to seek those things that make for peace. Come to the help of those whose lives are troubled by sorrow and hardship, and draw all people into the glorious and gentle rule of Christ their Savior. Hear us, O God. We lift our hearts to you on behalf of all, of, of all whose lives are clouded by any sort of affliction or sorrow. And we especially lift up those who are known to this congregation who are in need of your healing pre presence. We pray for Irene, Mike, Jim, Daryl, John, Brandon, Zine, and for all those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Let the light of Jesus' countenance heal and cheer them. Let all who care for them do so with tenderness and compassion. And grant that together we praise you for your unending mercies. Hear us, O God. O oh Lord, those who have died trusting in your promises now see their beautiful Savior face to face. Thank you for bestowing this blessing upon them. Continue to show, continue to, show to us your love. Though we are your unworthy servants, bless us with such good gifts as will sustain us and others in this life. Bring us into that endless life and light you share with all whom you have redeemed. Grant that into eternity we always sing glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thine. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you. Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen.